Today we will uh, discuss various uh, dimensions and aspects of uh, communication. So far we have seen the evolution of management as a discipline, various uh, functions of management, the importance of objectives and the management by objectives, the importance of uh, planning and coordination. Today we will spend some time on understanding another important aspect that is communication. In this lecture you must know and understand the definition and concept of communication, elements of communication process, types of communications, definition, merits and limitations of oral communication. In the next lecture we will try and talk about the the other aspect of communication that is the written communication. So as we go along you will see communication is defined as the sharing of message, facts, opinions, ideas, attitudes and emotion between a sender manager and receiver employee or between two or more people. I think this is one of the comprehensive uh, definitions. So if you see here that there is a kind of a content which could be a message or it could be a fact, some de description of an event or it could be view, a, a feeling of one person or it could be a, an anger <coughs> or it is the dislike of a person so that there is a sender and in this context we are talking about a sender manager and the other side is a receiver who could be called as an employee. So that is what we are talking about as the basic model or a process of communication. And so if you see the elements of communication process you will find that there is a source. So without sender there is no communication. So then the sender whatever is there in his or her mind need to translate that into a behavior or into an action or into set of words. So this is what is called as the encoding and then you have to look for the media. The media basically we are considering as oral or written. So it is also called as the channel of communication. So then it reaches the the other individual that is the receiver, then the receiver need to understand this, it is called the decoding. So there is decoding and then the receiver sends an agreement or an acceptance or follows through an action or there is a reaction, this is what is called as a feedback. So unless all the three, all the issues are covered, there is no communication. So issues or this communicate the aspects. So there is a sender, encoding, channel or the media, the decoding, the receiver and the feedback is considered as the basic model of communication. And you can see at different points of time that is from at the transmission that the source itself or it is the encoding process or it could be the noise which can come moving from one encoding to that particular media and media to the decoding and to the receiver side or at the feedback level. So the problems can come at any stage. So if you look at elements of communication process, the communicator, the person who intends to communicate the message to the another person, the message that is the subject matter of communication which we have seen earlier it could be anything, opinion, order, appeal or views and then you have the receiver who receives the, the message and the feedback through a reply or a reaction and transmission is the act of conveying the message and the channel, the medium used to transmit the message. So if you start seeing this, what are the barriers to effective communication? So each of these stages need to be understood and elaborated further. So the important thing is the differing perceptions. 
So people who have different backgrounds of knowledge and experience often perceive the same phenomena from different perceptive or the through different perceptions. The perception is act of knowing. So all the time you will see that with the kind of words used, the kind of expressions used is culture specific, is also the specific if you see the language wise or it could be the region wise. So the words per se have no meaning. The words belong to that particular individual as well as to the culture. So that is how the differing perceptions, differences in understanding could mean many things. Very common words like hot, warm, so some of these words in English can mean, can mean uh, different things to different people. Similarly the verbal gestures or the attack or the expression of uh, feelings also could vary from one culture to the other and that is how the perception is considered as one of the critical things and the perception and to the language. So the language differences are often closely related to differences in individual perceptions. So these are very closely linked and the meanings, the particular the symbolic meanings about the status of a person and what kind of words used in communication. Sometimes it is shouting at the other person is highly acceptable in certain places, but shouting is considered as insult in another place. Shouting can show a closeness, a warmth in certain other circumstances. So the words, the behavior and the actions, it is basically there in the perception which can come around the language and the culture. Noise is another important aspect that disturbs, intrudes or interferes, interferes with the communication. See the noise could be that when <coughs> somebody is telling to the other person, the noise becomes a kind of a distraction. One is not able to focus on what is being said and the message may get distorted, message may not be completely heard on the other side. Another is the emotionality, the anger, love, defensiveness, hate, jealousy, fear, embarrassment, depression, all of these influence how we understand the message of the other person. So the best is to learn uh, to accept these emotions as a part of this communication process. In other words, the sometimes the you do not even understand what is being said because you are involved with your own concerns, your own issues, your own problems. Another barrier what has been generally listed and considered is inconsistent verbal and non-verbal communication, body movements, gestures, clothing, the distance because the, what the person is saying from a distance could mean differently and to the one who is close to you, primary medium of communication etc. are all factors that influence communication. So the gestures would help, the body movements can convey many things along with the words and and also the the color of the dress and the way the person is wearing can also influence the the communication process another important thing is the psychological aspect called the distrust so the credibility of a message is largely influenced by the trust or the interpersonal trust or what people call it as or the distrust between the sender and the receiver. In, uh, uh, in, Indian, you know, in Indian language this word called the apta vakya. So the apta is one who is my apta or it, it, you know, it gives that feeling of closeness. So the credibility of a message is to a large extent a function of the 
of the credibility of the sender in the mind of the receiver. So the past experiences and why this person is uh, telling me something. So these kind of questioning in the mind of the receiver would make him to look at the sender and then when he is able to give required attention and follow what is being said and if the person has a negative feeling, a mistrust, then it is likely he will discount whatever is being said or whatever is being stated and he may reject the sender as well as the contents. If you look at, because anyway in any of this there could be a problem within the sender, there could be problem with the media because of the noise, there could be problems of encoding and there is a problem of decoding as well as the problems of the receiver. All will add to this confusion or difficulties of communication. But if you look at in the organizational context, what are the communication situations and what are the aids of communication? There are, there are any number of things because the communication happens on a daily basis between different levels of people across the organization. It is extremely important as we have seen for the purpose of coordination, for understanding of the set goals and also implementing the plans in an effective manner. However, certain situations communication becomes much more important and critical. If you look at this specifically about the appraisal interviews, the appraisal interviews are situations where the boss, the manager sits with the subordinates and then reviews the steps as well as the direction in which the goals are being pursued as well as achieved. During that time, the communication becomes very critical. We have seen in management by objectives, jointly the manager and the subordinate, they sit together, explore and understand the goals of the organization. They also define various steps to achieve the goals and meet and review to what extent they have achieved the identified steps and what else they will do, they make that kind of a joint contract. So that is a very intense communication process. Similarly, the conversations. The conversations could have also many things. There are people who talk about enabling communication and non-enabling communication. Like one of the managers was saying, if you ask the other person, why did you do something? Who asked you to do something becomes non-enabling because it makes the other person to become very defensive. If you ask the same person, how did you do this? That will be much more exploring kind and then the individual gets extra energy. So he was talking about how is an enabling kind of a communication and who and why are non-enabling communications. So conversations are extremely important in the organization and such communications could be enabling where it energizes the individual and there are set of other communications which will harm the interpersonal relations which will also stop one to take initiatives and do some extra work within the organizational setup. The other aspect of AIDS along with the oral communication is the drawings and the signages. So we have seen in any number of organizations the direction to reach an office or within the office you will see what is the room number and who sits where. Some of these details essentially the signages which communicates as well as drawings it is it gives like the typically the maps, the drawings to convey in, in an engineering manufacturing situations. And you also have some of the modern communications, so what we used to have earlier the telex, then you have the, the telephone to this, now the fax, the, this is another example. 
this list is not exhaustive but simple illustration of different kinds of communication what is possible in a workplace. I think what is important is also to see this grape wine. Grape wine is also considered as unofficial communication. The grape wine is the informal communication what happens at different levels. Please note it is not grape wine, it is vine, it is grape wine which indicates an informal communication at the workplace. Similarly, we also have the information technology. Today the IT has changed, I did mention earlier, particularly the office technology, the way we have stored and retrieved the information that has been influenced by IT in a great way and in a very significant way. But we also have other methods of communication. You have the Yahoo Messenger, you have the email, you have the voicemail, you can see the person. So today there are different methods of communication available, different medias are available because of the impact of the IT technologies. As I said that this list is not in any order or not exhaustive, but we must see many more context of communication. You know, you have the meetings. Meetings is another example of where the individual is in conversation, is in communication with others, but it is much more formal. So the context is much more formal. It is mostly the leader led and there are groups of people who work together. Meetings also can be between two individuals where orders are given, issues are discussed, problems are identified and people work together. So the meetings could be one to one and one to many. But most of the time meetings are an important methodology of having conversation amongst set of people who are focused on achievement of certain tasks. Similarly, the memoranda. Memorandum is the written document to convey orders, views or agreed uh, set of conditions to the others. Here are the notice boards where it is the media of communication is written but the written uh, communication is exhibited so that people can read and understand. And also the various pre-printed material or the forms also can be used where part of the communication is given by the top management of what they are looking for the or the others will fill in that format to complete the required information. Suggestion box is another example where individuals can write their views, their feelings, their complaints and then send it to the other levels or the senior levels and telephone if I do not mention the our list would be definitely incomplete. So we have several of these contexts, the tools and the aids. But if you see information becomes very critical for any effective communication. So unless there is information, unless you have the details, unless you have an agenda there is no effective communication. So information is often the most valuable asset and this information comes to the source in different ways. So the, some of the various sources of information are customers. Customers would give their feedback, their complaints, their experiences. Several organizations also collect this information in a very systematic manner. Then the suppliers. Suppliers bring several changes. They introduce new technology. They bring in sophistication or they may have problems because of power or because of raw material or because of uh, local conditions. So the suppliers do have something to say. Similarly, the bosses and colleagues and also the library, it is the source of information. And as you see this, as you are getting information in different ways, one need to understand and one need to assimilate this information. So the personal filing is one simplest of the thing. That means as you are getting different 
pieces of information you make a note you classify it sometimes whatever you have heard you put it in writing and then keep it together then suddenly the reading is another method so if you want to be a good oral communicator your reading habit also must be must be pretty good so it is the so the today there are different ways one can establish and improve for reading habits so the oh, one can go through every word by word sometimes one can read through a normal speed then one can practice the speed reading there are people who could scan the pages and then make sense out of it but also sometimes as you are hearing that you make a notes of whatever being stated all these are kind of aids and different kinds of reading understanding so the as we have seen some basics of communication we need to look at what happens really within the organizational context within the management context so within the management context if you see it is divided depending upon the organization structure the expression and direction we have seen organization organizing so within the organizing we have seen different forms of organization structure so the first way of classify that the organization whether it is formal communication or informal communication so the formal communication are legitimized authorized by the organization which is normally considered as the top down approaches and there is an informal communication where without any authorization without any schedule people do discuss their understanding their difficulties and or people meet the other person in an informal context so these are all called about this is informal communication so the formal communication people also interpret it as what happens within the office context in the or during the office hours where people take their legitimized positions like the boss manager subordinate in charge so these are all defined positions of the individual within the organizational context so when people take such things that's the time where you are calling it as a formal communication an informal communication people can come as friends people can come as belonging to the same region or people come together because they live in the same area or they know each other for a long time so when people come together have that kind of a conversation which can be work specific or which can be non work specific which can be career centric or not necessarily career centric those are all called as informal communication so the other method of seeing not only it is it is the informal or informal the other classification is whether it is oral communication or written communication oral communication is basically what people express without any aids or anything it is spoken through and the other one is where people use pen and paper and write and or send an email or send a memoranda or send some basically through other media that is called as the written communication we will elaborate on written communication in the next lecture but however we'll restrict our discussion today to various things what happens within this oral communication so we have seen the communication could be formal or informal or it could be written or oral another method of classification is what direction it takes within the organizational context so it could be downward communication downward communication is we are referring to the organizational hierarchy that is at the top level the managing director may call the meeting of the directors and may inform certain things the directors would inform to the next level of their general managers from general managers they convey their details to the managers the managers down communicate to the next levels that is maybe their uh, supervisors and assistant managers from assistant managers supervisors it is conveyed to the 
operators, workers and all those concerned people. This is typically the what, the order, the views, the feelings follow from top to the bottom. That is what is called as the downward communication. Similarly, you also have the upward communication. That is, if you see grievance, complaints is one kind of upward communication where people convey their displeasure, their discontentment, their inability to perform because of certain lack of skills or lack of availability of materials and resources. They convey this to their senior level and the senior level may communicate to the next level. That is basically an upward communication. We also have the horizontal communication where the same level of people, we have seen other day the departmentation. So, the personnel department conveys certain things to the operations management, operations group. Similarly, the production people may convey certain things to the R&D people. R&D people may seek some information from uh, marketing. So, these are all the people at the same level convey or seek information details from the other groups at their same level. So, these are all called the horizontal communication. We also have the diagonal communication or one can also call it as a network communi networked communication within the organizational system where <coughs> people can convey from one group to the other. Like the production group may convey certain things to, to the finance or finance may con communicate certain things to the R&D so that it can go in a crisscross manner within the organizational system not necessarily following that line concept what we discussed. So, in a line and staff organization you will also see some diagonal communication. So, as we have seen all these are the basis of the, the classification is certainly on the basis of organizational structure. What is important in the informal communication is this grapevine. The grapevine is a form of rumors. So, in any organization where there are several changes are coming, changes are coming not in an incremental manner, not in an organic manner, not in a smooth manner, that is the time where people do make lot of guesswork, people create rumors, people share their apprehensions. That is the time where the organization seem to be affected by this grapevine or the informal communication. So, normally the, the it cuts across the officially recognized uh, forms of communication. Sometimes it may be communicating something which is against the achievement of the organizational goals. Sometimes it can come in the way of implementation of effective policies. That is how the group wine, the sorry, the, the grape wine which is created by the groups are considered as very critical for implementation of change programs. So, that must be dealt through, that must be corrected, correct information need to be passed through and people have to be comforted with their anxieties and fears. So, it is informal communication may also be conveyed not necessarily through words by gestures, by agreements, by smile. Some of the things you can recognize very clearly in a group processes. People do <coughs> communicate to each other not necessarily through words, but is also called as <coughs> non-verbal communication. So, oral communication is basically a verbal communication, but this grape wine will have both verbal as well as non-verbal. As we have seen the downward communication which happens between the superiors with their subordinates and the upward communication happens between the subordinates to their seniors and the horizontal communication or the lateral communication at the same level. The same level communication is extremely critical as far as the coordination function is concerned. 
coordination of various activities in a proactive, in a responsive manner can only be done through great effective systematic horizontal or the lateral communication. This is also I mentioned this diagonal communication where they are not at the same department, they are not necessarily the boss and subordinate. These things can be considered as horizontal to a vertical but in between is the diagonal communication. Let us run through some of the details of the message or the expression of the message itself. On the basis of method of expression used, the communication is being classified into categorize, right? Namely, the oral, the written, or the the oral and written and the ge by gestures. Oral communication it involves exchange of messages with the help of spoken words. Any silent communication means where you are using the gestures that is becomes more complicated <coughs> but the oral communication may take place by face to face contacts and also through many of the mechanical devices. So when we are talking about face to face and mechanical devices today in a great way in the management we use the virtual teams and the virtual working. So the virtual teams virtual communication involves that non face to face kind of communication. So both face to face conversation and conversation through mechanical devices hold an important place in the communication system of any organization. So whether it is through face to face or through the use of any media but communication happens day in and day out. And the, it is the most natural way if you see it is the face to face, face to face communication. The, the transmitting, transmission of orders or giving the views of the seniors, lectures, group discussion, social gathering, anything if you see these are all face to face. Most of the time the individuals meet together, discuss the issues together. But once you have this face to face, general preference of the people is this has great meaning, meaning where people are able to understand each other, there is a great cooperation and the communication can be both through the words as well as through gestures and that helps people to understand, appreciate whereas the, the other person also has a choice or a chance to ask for some questions. So the listener can make some queries and if he has any doubts he can uh, get that required clarification and so there is an opportunity for feedback. So the communication becomes complete in uh, the face to face context. And the more and more you use the mechanical devices, what we talked about this kind of a where the people are not so close, they are distributed geographically or from one, uh, one place and the other, they may even be located different parts of the globe today. The modern business enterprises are depending on more and more sophisticated methods of communication which are away from the familiar method of face to face communication. So then the early days of using signals what we are talking about the, the telexes or we also use the word telegrams then to the telephone then we moved to the intercoms and uh, so then the pagers then the you know one way of the dictaphone. So we have heard of many of these gadgets and uh, to many of the uh, methods and the modes, so if it's, you know there are any number of that. But in any of these things if you see, we are basically seeing that there is one very advantageous, most preferable 
uh, most used is the face to face communication. But it to because of the required complexity, because of the sheer size of the organization, today people depend upon use of media much much more than what it is desirable or required. That is how many of the IT companies today at least I have heard people describe it as electronic bureaucracy. So the earlier the communication what we have seen was hierarchical division of labor then the task to be completed and the ideas were communicated to the appropriate levels from one level to the other. But today because of the modern internet and the emails so that we are able to reach out several people at the same time. So the communication is faster, much more superior. You can combine different medias, but the communication is incomplete because you have the sender, then you have decoding, then you know the so the encoding, and then you are put into the media. But what happens at the other is somebody has to decode it, and then the receiver need to use it, and then it should result in some action. So all the aspect of communication is purposeful. So the receiver is an extremely important aspect of our communication process. As we have talked about the sender and the media, if you look at the receiver, the most critical thing is the listening. Active listening is an important word. So the active listening makes one to give that required attention, understand completely what the other person is trying to say and get that complete meaning and picture out of it. So the use open questions means you know the, the individual listener is able to comprehend and ask some questions. And the active listening means would also ensure that all the points are noted very clearly and then active listening means you are able to handle all the criticisms and active listening also comes to the philosophy that the other person is always right. So the customer is not always right means then you will find why is that person is saying certain things, what are the experiences. We will also see some different methods of this oral presentation. Our communication discussion would be in incomplete unless we examine various methods of oral presentations. So they become extremely important when the when somebody has to put an argument, convince set of people, seek help, seek commitment. So when you see two parts, one is preparing the presentations and the presenting itself. So the preparing the presentation if you see as a part of the overall presentation there are five uh, main areas to consider. You need to see the timing when you want to present. We have seen that at some times even though people are talking about very important thing but it is spoken at the end of the day or very late part of the day. So where people have no energy, no initiative and they are not able to focus on. So it is in that sense the timing and also the criticality of what you are being stated and very clearly the objectives of presentation. What is the purpose of the communication and the structure, how the whole thing has been put together. So normally you will see some, some introduction, some details and some conclusions. And also the illustrations and the visual aids where people not only see the or hear the words also can see some details, some, uh, some visuals means you know some pictures and <coughs> today also different medias available you know that is some videos are available. So one can also look into those three dimensional graphs or it could be two dimensional graphs and then the questions. So these are five areas to consider when somebody is trying to make an 
oral presentation. Similarly, while making the presentation and the you know if you see the again the time and duration, then the details of the presentation material, the visual aids and reacting to the audience of what that they are likely to ask and also sometimes helping the audience by giving chance by repetition by discussing various things. So oral communication we can also see coming in very intensely in interviews particularly the employee selection interviews where opportunities are given for the interviewer and the interviewee to sit together and explore whether the individual is fit for the current job of the organization and also the negotiations and bargaining. The negotiations can be between the employees and the customers or employees and the suppliers or typically the bargaining can happen between the union and the management representatives. When you look at the oral communication, the telephone is another most uh, important mass communication device where people do get into the interpersonal communication. I do not have to say much but still that today people are talking about the telephone etiquettes, that the do's and don'ts of use of the telephone. So it is such a common thing but you know people also get into issues, people get into the success or failure mode by their understanding and use of this instrument. So the question is always it is better to identify that who you are and then also ask that or from which organization you are calling and then look for the person whom you are seeking to speak. And many a times it is also important when you speak over phone to see who the other person is talking on the other side. You may give out unnecessary details and secrets of the organization if you do not know who the other person is. So it is important to check to whom you are speaking to and, and also the sometimes the time you are speaking and if you are whatever you are asking is very important it is extremely necessary and important to check with the other person. Is it convenient time to talk to? Is it the best time to discuss these issues? So that you are making the other person comfortable. The other person may be preoccupied or other person may be in conversation with someone else and being today you are seeing several people use the mobile telephone. So you may not know where they are located. If you are calling on the landline in the office phone, then it, you may be partially or mostly you can be sure that the person is in an of office context. But today when people use mobiles, you really do not know. So it is very important to check whether it is convenient to speak to the other person. And also stating clearly, maybe precisely the nature of the call. You want to talk to the person on a social purpose or on a business purpose. So why are you calling? I think you must make it clear to the other person and then seek that uh, permission of the other. And making sure that the, the maybe phone numbers are exchanged if it is necessary. That in case if the other person is not there or if the person you can, he would like to call you back at a later point of time. It is necessary to leave the details to the other person so that he can call him back. And also being clear who must do what as a result of the call. So you must call that convey and then since you are not seeing the person particularly if it is a boss subordinate kind of a call, make sure that what is your intention and whether the other person has understood that intention very clearly. Sometimes. It is also important whether it at the interpersonal level, face to face level or through a telephone or through any other method or the media, 
it is important to summarize at the end of the call that what is that important thing you wanted to convey to the other person. And the signing off courteously is another critical thing. Some people show their position as bosses. So they are so discourteous to their subordinates. And that is the time where you do not get the cooperation. You do not get that commitment of the other person. So it is extremely important to be nice and polite to close the conversation so that the other person is understanding and can respond to your requirements. If you if we continue to discuss apart from the telephone telephone conversation use of some of these medias to communicate the managing meetings becomes another important skill of any manager. Part of the communication you need to work through with others in a in a group situation and in that context handling of the meetings is very very important and it is an important skill. Is meeting appropriate? So many a times when you call people they must see that that there is some important thing, important information either will be discussed or will be informed. So if those things are not there, people may consider it as a waste of time. So the purpose of the meeting must be very clear. The agenda need to be circulated. So people know why the meeting has been called and also the details which are going to be discussed. The meetings in order to be successful, if you are not the main communicator, it is always important to have a chairperson. The role of a chairperson is to moderate. The chairperson's another role is to do the time management, making sure that all the deliberations are completed within the given time frame. Another important role of the chairperson is to make sure that all people listen to what is being communicated and also they have a chance to ask or raise questions so that meetings are conducted in a smooth and effective manner. So if the chairperson may not be the moderator, it is better to identify somebody as a chairperson, somebody as a, a moderator, but also you need to have someone to take minutes. That is the summary of whatever is being deliberated somebody has to record all these deliberations. And it is also important to create ground rules, ground rules in terms of the time frame within which the whole thing is going to be discussed, how much time for the presentation, how much time for discussion and how the group is going to come for some conclusions. So these are all part of the, the structuring and there could be any number of this good meeting behaviors. The good meeting behaviors to have a structured systematic presentations, discussions and following the minutes, making sure that all the discussions are leading to discussion at the decisions and decisions are implemented and meetings also spend some time on action taken reports. What is important is to have a complete picture of communication what can come in meetings. So if we spend little time on the merits of oral communication, the oral communication as I said that it happens through face to face and also through any of the medias and the mediums what we talked about earlier. So verbal communication is extremely ex relatively less expensive compared to the written uh, communication and similarly the mode of transmission as well. But sometimes it is also very cheap and effective if you are using email and internet. And oral communication is also more effective because of the direct contact between people involved. So in a direct contact people can raise questions, can understand the non-verbal behaviors, they can see the seriousness and the commitment apart from the words expressed. So the verbal communication helps 
always getting in quick uh, responses from the receivers. So that means the feedback is faster, it is also called as the synchronous communication. So there is synchronization between the sender and the receiver. Whereas when you send a mail, particularly through internet, then the receiver may or may not be there along with you. But in a chat mode, it is much more synchronous. But here, it is, you know, the in an email, it is asynchronous. So when you send, the person may not be there, then he would come and receive at some other point of time and would respond at some other convenient time. So the question is, in a verbal communication, there is an opportunity to have this face-to-face -face meetings and so the other person can also understand. You can also demonstrate many things. Oral communication is faster, particularly as compared to the written communication. There are a uh, good number of studies, but our own experiential thing also that it happens uh, with speed and with efficiency. But verbal communication provides for greater flexibility because you can use some words. Sometimes you have seen that I make some corrections in whatever being stated that gives you that kind of a flexibility. I can say that I did not mean in that sense, but I want to state these, these, these things. So that one can give that required clarity then and there. So the problem is that there is no record of verbal communication is kept. It becomes very routine in uh, work life. So the limitation of oral communication, if you see, it may not be effective when the communicator and communication are taking from a long distance with the help of a mechanical device. So if you are talking about from a distance, so it is always seen that, that you are not able to keep all the records and the details. So to that extent, one can see there is loss of focus and the details. And similarly, the, it is not necessarily very reliable. There is problem of a breakdown. Sometimes you are whatever you say, are saying, the voice is being cut. You assume that the other person has understood, the other person has uh, taken care of all the details. So there could be some problems of this oral communication and the media put together. And the, if the information is pretty lengthy, is not feasible, particularly when uh, listener is not able to understand the whole information. And that is the time where you also see the oral communication is coming, uh, is conveyed, is not so effective. Verbal communication is not possible when parties to communicate are at distant places and sometimes there is no other means of communication is available to verify. So it is good that if you are able to convey certain things orally but also can follow up with a, with a letter or with a document. And many a times it cannot be a proof of that you have conveyed all the orders. So the writing becomes a record. So it is important that written communication people have after you give the verbal instructions. So sometimes it is, uh, if it is an audio or a video tape or a record, then it becomes much more, much more authentic. So the oral communication may give rise to conflicts in certain situations. You will see because of the immediate response from the listener. So because he may get agitated with respect to some words or some details. But later on he may say, okay, now I understand this is what you wanted to say. So it is desirable sometimes people also have the document in writing. And oral communication, particularly when you have to have meetings, when you have already decided that time it becomes too time consuming. And if people have to travel from one place to the other, it also becomes costly. So the cost and time makes sometimes the world communication through a face-to-face -face mode becomes difficult and also becomes challenging. But 
it is as I mentioned it is important to have face to face thing with respect to give instructions or counseling the subordinates and it is also the executives use that oral communication while dealing with the trade union leaders or the at the time of negotiation and bargaining. Workers also use oral communication to convey their grievances and suggestions to the management particularly where they can describe certain things, explain some of their difficulties. They also can use this as a very effective method of giving feedback to the management where they can convey <coughs> their approval or displeasures. As we have seen communication <coughs> takes place through a simplest model of sender and receiver and there is an encoding and a decoding and there is a noise or a confusion. So this can happen in the organizational context, the downwards or upwards or horizontal or in a networked fashion or in a diagonal fashion. But the context could be different, it could be the appraisal situation, it could be the grievance handling situation. <coughs> Overall, we have seen how communication happens is its definition and the concept and elements of this communication process, various forms of communication and also some of the merits, limitations and applications of oral communication. We also need to see further the aspect of the, the written uh, communication. So <coughs> in the next session, we shall see the following concept of written communication, merits of written communication, limitations and applications of written communication. With that we will try and see communication as an important and core function of management.